ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot read this sign, right there, it says Boys Town, saving children, healing families. Okay, if you're in the mood for some jacked up Googling, I want you to get on your little Google machine and Google Boys Town, Nebraska. What you're going to find is a, a location in the Midwest riddled with heavy controversy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's All Me. On today's video, we are going to be giving an update on a video I did previously a number of months ago where we were driving through a place called Boys Town. And this is in the midst of Omaha, Nebraska. Boys Town is surrounded by a bunch of conspiracy and controversy, exploitation, and that video received quite a bit of attention and I actually had some Boys Town alumni reach out to me and asked for the opportunity to share their side of Boys Town, Nebraska. They wanted to touch on their personal experiences there. So I got together and I talked with them. So we're gonna jump right into their interviews, give them the opportunity to share their stories, share their perspectives, and talk about what Boys Town was like for them individually. So without further ado, let's jump right into this update video for Boys Town, Nebraska. Okay, how's that? There we go, man. I see you. Right. It's been a while since I've had to use that. Yeah, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a pro at it either. <laughs> yeah, we're both learning here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man, thanks for, uh, for wanting to do this with me. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Just, uh, I'll just be straightforward with you. Um, you know, if you do this video, that um, there's going to be a lot of powerful people that's not going to be too happy. Um, I, so. I figured. Okay, let's do her. So to go ahead and just introduce yourself and give the uh, basically the viewers like what your attachment to Boys Town is. And then from oh, okay. there, just go ahead and dive into your stories. Yeah, my name is Howard Lacey. I went to Boys Town in 1988. I graduated in 1992. I then worked for Boys Town um, for a while. And uh, since then, um, you know, I knew kind of what was going on as I got all growing up and started working for him. I saw more that was going on and um, never worked uh, for him again. Um, they they tried to hide a lot of stuff, but they couldn't hide everything. And um, but anyway, I'll get into that as you ask your questions. Um, but that's uh, pretty much that. Okay. So when we first jumped onto the video here just now, you said, just so you know, if you make this video, there's going to be some pretty powerful people that aren't going to be very happy about that. And you mentioned to me in the past with our conversations back and forth that there's a lot of things in my original video that were missed or maybe misconstrued or misunderstood. So I'd like for you to touch on that just so that we can reference that old video and talk about you know more of the truth because you have hands-on experience with Boys Town, both as a participant and an employee. So just go ahead and Correct. touch on those things for me, just to give the audience a better idea of what actually happens at Boys Town. What's supposed to happen at Boys Town and what actually happens at Boys Town are two different things. Um, I saw your video, and a lot of things you know you done you know some of your research I could tell, and you touched base on a few things, but there's a whole lot that you missed, and you know even John D. Camp missed uh, in his book way back then, and if he had known some of these things, it probably would have helped you know bring light as to what was really going on. But there 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 is there's a whole lot of cover up. There's a lot of powerful people, um, such as like you know how did they get the boys you know and girls um, and out of those homes without being spotted. Well, underneath the old homes, all the way to the field house of the high school, there's actually underground tunnels that stretch, you know, through those. And a lot of people don't know that, and that's how they get them out. But when it comes to new homes um, that were built afterwards, or like, say, over by the water tower, um, they don't have that access. So those have to be taken right out. Um, a couple other things we missed. Um, uh, within the last uh, few years since, say, Father Bowes took over, um, uh, he knew that Father Hutt, before him, knew what was going on, admitted it, and even, you know, the fathers were power, powerless as to really do anything as Father Bowes is learning, but I'll kind of get into that here in just a minute. Okay. Um, so, Father Peter, he wasn't allowed back on campus after, you know, he, you know, was no longer director there. They knew what was going on. There wasn't much they could do about it. You're 
uh, when it came to like even Decamp's book, one thing they missed is, you know, Boys Town is its own individual town. Um, it has its own police department, its own fire department, its own zip code. But yet you'll notice that no Omaha police department ever actually goes there. And with all the allegations and everything that went on, if you were to go talk to the Boys Town Police Department, ask for copies of your police reports, there's nothing. Um, the you, you know, everything would just be taken care of, you know, in-house. And if you ever took anything out of Boys Town, you were gone. If they thought as an employee that if you were going to rat on them, um, they had a high turnover rate, except for, you know, a select few, which, you know, a lot of them are dead uh, in nursing homes now. So they're not a threat to me anymore because they're dead and old and can't do much. So now I can speak up without fear of pertinent or appraisal because, you know, um, they're, they're past that point in their life. Right, right. But if you were to follow, you know, just like in the book, if you were to follow the money and see where that went, um, it's going to open up a whole lot of light to you. Uh, some of the things that have changed more recently, and you can uh, check this out on Father Peter's website before he died. It's still up. Uh, Father Bose no longer lives on Boys Town. Alumni are not allowed on campus. Father Bose gave himself one very healthy raise of 600 and some thousand dollars. He also doesn't, you know, have dinner with the kids and things like that. The amount of money they've got is just huge. Um, they are also no longer tax exempt like they used to be. Okay. There's some different theories as to why they lost their tax exempt status. As you saw in the main media, when it comes to the priests with these kids, uh, they had no credibility. They were just looked at, Hey, you're a criminal, you're a child. And anybody that's under 18, that's a youth, really doesn't have any rights. Their rights come through their parents. So they knew that, you know, any priest all the way from all over the world, I mean, huh, from Ireland, France, you name it, they'd come to Boys Town and they'd be able to do what they wanted. And, you know, even the father at the time, he couldn't do anything because if so, he'd have to face other members of the Catholic Church and they didn't want to make each other look bad. But then it goes deeper as to, um, one day when I asked Father Peter, I said, so who are your bosses? And he explained to me that they're off of the Air Force Base, and it's basically our military and our federal government. Uh, stretches so far, uh, shortly after I got done working for Boys Town, I went in the military. Uh, first place I was stationed at was Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Well, two-star general of the base was a Boys Town graduate. And, and you know, he kind of knew what was going on, and... Um, I mean, fact check all this stuff. You'll find out that, you know, everything I'm saying is dead on. It's not, you know, made up. Fact check everything. Anybody that's watching this video. Right. But Boys Town isn't what it was originally meant to be. Somehow along the way, it got corrupt. Nobody wanted to say anything. Um, there was a few employees back. I believe his name was Mr. White. He was one of the teachers. He went on the media. He tried to tell them what was going on. They scared him with so many lawsuits. The next day he was back on air retaliating, pulling back everything he said because he was just flat out scared. That's just kind of the highlights. And I'm sure you got a lot of questions. So I'm going to kind of let you go ahead and ask away. Okay. So throughout your, your conversation and, you know, kind of reflecting on things, you've mentioned what's going on at Boys Town and they knew what was going on at Boys Town. As a person that experienced Boys Town personally, can you expand on what you mean by that for the audience who may not be familiar with this? Oh, you bet. Yeah, Boys Town, um, I was a tour guide. So uh, Boys Town, you know, originally was uh, started in Omaha with uh, just, you know, five kids. Then it grew in, you know, by Father Flanagan, you know, as mainly an orphanage. And then it changed to be, a, you know, orphanage slash juvenile detention center. And now you don't see much orphans, but you see a whole lot of the, you know, kids that don't have any credibility. And as far as what changed it, um, I think it was money. And I think, uh, you know, just like the politics we have today, uh, everybody's kind of got dirt on everybody in that circumstance. But the ones that are true victims are the kids. So you mentioned the underground tunnels, and obviously, if you're not a part of that community, it's probably not something that's widely known to the general public, that there's tunnels that are just kind of mazing around underneath Boys Town. What is the, the official use for those, and is there any other uses that you're 
familiar with or that you know of that they were used for in other ways oh oh yeah yep absolutely yeah originally they weren't intended for anything bad at all actually they were made to, for you know an ingenious thing where you know when father flanagan uh you know built those you know there was you know world war ii going on and everything and if there was ever you know any kind of bombs or anything you want the kids to be safe and so that they could still function go house to house to you know building to building so they made sure that there was tunnels built underneath from all those houses and over the years you know they knew that the cold war stuff was over not much use for them and so they were using that stuff as uh you know how to get the kids in and out when you say to get the kids in and out can you expand on that a little bit oh yeah in the middle of the night uh, taking to washington dc um myself and i haven't talked to johnny so i won't say his last name but uh, Johnny, I mean, we got great grades in school in 1991, and but you know we all got straight A's, but all of our grades were just uh, you know general studies like your normal math. And then him and I both got letters from Washington D.C. saying, "Hey, you know, with your great grades and everything, you're invited to the Young Leaders Convention of tomorrow." Well, my family teacher thought that that was kind of weird, and so he says, "No, you're not going." And being that we were in the same community, Community 5, uh, as John was, um, his family teacher said, no, also an upper management was ticked. And my family teacher says, well, something's weird because uh, th this is something more for, you know, like genius level type people. And our youth is, you know, just, uh, we just had like the general studies here. So this doesn't make sense as to why they've been chosen. My family teacher, um, he was under a lot of heat, but we didn't go. And a lot of kids were taken, not just to Washington, D.C. Um, and that White House thing where, you know, it shows in the video. You know, I believe him. I mean, you know, how else do you know what the White House looks like from the inside? But it wasn't just there. I mean, they're, they were taken out to off an Air Force base. And when it comes to Father Peter, uh, you know, a lot of his, you know, bosses, you know, at the time were people, you know, at off at Air Force Base, which is, you know, what made up the board of directors who were his bosses. And some of those same people just happened to be on the list. So did you ever go to Washington, D.C. yourself? No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, Max thought that there was something real weird about it. He thought that it would be embarrassing, especially if they didn't test with just, you know, taking your normal, you know, high school type uh, equivalency test to be invited to the Young Leaders Convention of tomorrow. Myself and Johnny, I won't say his last name because I haven't, you know, exactly asked his permission, but we're yeah. both kind of disappointed until, you know, later on we get older and we see what's going on. But um, there's, you know, some other things. I mean, we all kind of knew something was going on. We'd come home from school. There'd be a lot of paper clippings clipped out. We're supposed to do reports. Well, the back side of that paper is what we needed. Well, the front side is the stuff that they're taking out that had any kind of negative uh, things towards Boys Town. Yeah, like I said, these are just stuff that's, you know, coming uh, to the top of my head right now. Yeah, there's a lot of powerful people. And as you see in the news when it comes to, you know, the Catholic and Archdiocese, uh, you know, they finally kind of like that, hey, you know, uh, they, you know, put up the rules and said, you know, don't say anything about this. In how many years again did you actually live at Boys Town? Uh, four years. Uh, well, there's youth and worked for them for one year afterwards. Okay. During your time there living as a youth, did any of your peers ever go to Washington, D.C. or have any personal experiences that are more on the negative side of Boys Town? Oh, how to put this? Well, the kid's place that I took when I came there in 1988, he had, was complaining about the same stuff that was going on. This is one of the kids that they haven't mentioned in the books or anything. Um, nobody would believe him. He was getting, you know, sexually um assaulted and they thought kept on telling him that he was just doing it for some kind of attention seeking behavior well yeah. he hung himself in the bathroom and um he died and that's the kid's place you know that i took um there was also a girl um i think he's actually in decamp's book i'm trying to remember her name off the top of my head um it, it was amazing that she was charged with lying under court which in nebraska holds a sentence of one year but she was given three years which really is kind of a, you know another message of saying hey if you're gonna you know bring to light what's going on um there will be consequences but yeah. now you know a lot of them have you know died and uh gone on like i said but as far as myself personally i didn't have that really experience there except for oh, i guess you could say three times for me it was uh oh two guys and they happened to be dead also 
Uh, his name was Alan and uh, Troy Spritcher. They were homosexuals. They were hired by the police to work in the summertime. They hired you know, all these college kids to give the family teachers a break. A lot of them, you know, they take you out in the fields, you know, try doing the touchy-feely stuff with you. And myself, I was on, you know, parks and grounds, so I was pretty much in the open, but they brought in a few kids that I believe was Troy Bridger. They asked if this touched and found out that he was gay and there was a big ordeal, but they never let us know um, what happened. He's been deceased. Um, so was Alan Vanner. He was, you know, another one. I can say those names are dead. And last but not least, when I was uh, working for Boys Town, I was a lifeguard up at uh, Okaboji, and there was one of the priests that I had gotten into some kind of you know, disagreement or argument or something with Father Peter. So he sent them up to Okaboji until they could, you know, get his butt out of there. Well, he made the mistake and thought that I was still a youth, wanted me to go into his room. So, you know, to pray. So I thought, okay, you know, I can go ahead and do that. And then, uh, you know, he wanted me to get down the knees to pray with them. They wanted me to stay on my knees as he got up and he started unbuttoning his pants. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, and he's like, well, you know, you need to pay, you know, your penance. And also, I'm like, oh, sorry, Father, <laughs> I'm not Catholic. And so uh, he let me know that if not, I was going to go to Carney. If I didn't do it, I was like, sir, um, I'm like 19, graduated, and I'm a staff member. He was like, oh, well, you get the hell out of here. You. And then he was just cussing and swearing, you know, that priesthood wow. just came out of him there. So I went and talked to my bosses, uh, Nobby Meisenberg, who's also deceased told him what was going on and uh, he was one of the lifers he had been there a long time so you know he kind of he had to have known what was going on in the past yeah and he just said straight out that if i call the you know okaboji or milford police department or anything i'd be terminated on the spot i'm like for what well that makes boys town look bad and by making boys town look bad that hurts boys town financially because there's not as many donators and you know uh you know give them the pity the guilt trip and that if you do this uh, you might be getting him, but you're going to be hurting all these other kids if you do that. So, you're, you know, your first uh, reaction is, OK, you know, since they're getting rid of him, just go ahead and let it go because I don't want to hurt the other kids. Right. And that seemed to have been their excuses for, uh, you know, they, they had their fallback uh, rebuttals whenever any of this stuff was brought up. To be able to talk to someone who's had a personal experience with the truly negative side the, the negative stigma of Boys Town is, is truly impactful. And that's why I wanted to talk to you, you know, so bad. After you commented on the video, I knew it was just an absolute must to talk to you. Because again, it's, it's one thing to go there. And again, my original video was just, it was my second time driving through Boys Town. And I got a lot of scrutiny for my emotional reactions to just like the overall vibe that I was getting from the place, which I totally understand. Um, I'm an emotionally driven person and I'm not one to hide my reactions to anything and I don't make excuses for it. It's just who I am. Um, but to be able to talk to someone to validate, you know, some of those negative feelings that maybe we picked up on. Sometimes when you deal with strong and negative stigmas that have been around locations for years, you can just go and be in the presence of them and you can feel that reverberating around you. It's just like it sticks. And I just, the first time I went there, I had the same exact feeling as I did the second time I went around. And to find that documentary, to do some more research, and then to talk to you, it's, it just, you know, takes some of those puzzle pieces and starts to put connections to them. And I guess as, as a closing to our talk here, as someone who is living in Boys Town, as someone who worked for Boys Town and has now separated themselves from Boys Town, at least from the positive things, it's more towards the negative stigma. What would you say to people that might come on this video and say, how dare you talk down to Boys Town? They're doing so many great things and it's such a great organization and they've helped so many people over the years. What would you say to those people who are going to come and scrutinize a video like this to say, hey, listen, open yourself up to the idea of these things actually were happening. And this isn't just a bunch of BS and people on the Internet, you know, throwing fluff on a screen. Oh, is what I would say is, is it Boys Town that was good for you? And I've said this, you know, to some of my friends, I got that same feedback. Or was it your family teachers? Because I still keep in contact with my family teachers. And, you know, he, you know, kind of knew something was fishy, you know, as I was saying, with that, you know, go to Washington, D.C. And 
some family teachers were having sex with their kids. They had bad ones. So was it Boys Town or was it the family teachers you had? Because Boys Town, it's it's just a town, but it's how the towns run is what was hurting the kids. But there's some family teachers that were able to keep their kids protected and others that were just there for the paycheck. And those are a lot of the kids that got um, molested and violated and, you know, put on drugs. And my comment would be, uh, rethink it, fact check everything that I've said, because I'm pretty sure you're going to find it dead on. If not in the Omaha newspaper, by stopping at the Boys Town Police Department, by talking to, you know, some of the other uh, alumni, you know, they're on my page, you know, feel free to friend them and, and ask. I mean, a lot of them, you know, some of them will get, you know, offended. Well, yeah, Father Peter was great. Well, you only saw Father Peter on Sunday for about an hour during the sermon. Other than that, you really didn't have much to do with them. It really boils down to, if you're protected, the type of family teachers you had. Myself, I had some really good family teachers, so um, they kept me safe. Awesome. So basically, in, in a nutshell, it's, there, there was truly good things with your experience at Boys Town. Not everything was bad. Not everything had a, a negative stigma attached. But you experienced enough to be able to say, listen, the negativity that comes from Boys Town is valid. You just have to look in the right places to find it. Right. Unfortunately, uh, now, last but not least, a lot of the good family teachers. I mean, you know, there's a guy that graduated uh, from my house. He was two years older than me. He just got done working for Boys Town. He lasted there about a year and a half. He saw what was going on, but no accountability towards the kids or the staff, and he quit. I just say from uh, the alumni standpoint of view, we're we're not happy with what's being um, done there. It's so secret. I mean, you can't even go on campus. Uh, now since your video hit, I'll just tell you this, if you go on campus, I can gar almost guarantee you if you're up there for probably 30 more minutes and that police car comes by, he's probably going to grab you. You're seeing from the comments. You're already on the, you're on the list. Yeah. Yeah. And I've received comments already from people that either have relatives there or are there themselves or have had friends from Boys Town share it with them and have reached out to me. I mean, it, that's, that's the world we live in today when we live with everything out there for people to comment on. You know, I open myself up to that and I'm, I'm open to that scrutiny and to those comments. Um, you know, I, by any means, I never meant harm to anybody. It's just I'm I wanted to shed light on these things that are clear and, and open to the public if you look and that they do exist. Right. And that's why I think it's important for me to come back with this update video, talking with people like you, talking with alumni that are no longer allowed on campus and to shed light on your stories, these stories of people who have spent time in Boys Town and can come and say, yes, these things did happen. I witnessed them. I experienced them myself and, and what have you. So uh, I just I thank you again, Howard, for for coming and talking to me um, and just for talking as yourself, for you to have the courage and the bravery to just come forward and talk about your experience. I, I commend you and uh, you have deep gratitude from me to you. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to you know, avoid the, the true negative things that have happened at Boys Town over these years. And it just means a lot to me that you reached out to me and were open to talk to me today. Oh, you're very welcome. And if there's any questions or anything that comes up you need some help with, you know, don't be shy. I'm here. Feel free to shoot me a message, give me a phone call, you know, and, you know, I'm here if you need me. Awesome. Well, thanks, Howard. I really appreciate it. And uh, you never know, we might have to do a, a second part to this video and I'll have you back on for that. Not a problem. Hey, thanks. Right, you man. take care and have a happy holiday. You too, buddy. Thank you so much.